Welcome to this lecture number 24 in groundwater hydrology and in today's lecture the topics to be covered are the potential evalu uh, evaluation of groundwater pollution followed by physical, chemical, biological analysis of groundwater quality and followed by criteria and measures of groundwater quality. So now, let us go to this uh, potential evaluation of the groundwater pollution. So, whenever uh, we need to evaluate the potential of the uh, groundwater pollution, so uh, this few things are uh, essential there. The first one is the identification of the pollution sources and potential uh, pollutants, potential of these pollutants. So, when we talk of this identification of this pollution sources, whether these uh, so are uh, the, uh, these pollute, pollution sources are they coming from uh, the landfill or are they coming from uh, that is uh, the water supply or are they, are they coming from say some other sources like industrial pollution or municipal agricultural. So, they need to be taken into consideration. And uh, here, so the the pollutants, the may be they may be either physical pollutants, they may be inorganic pollutants, they may be organic pollutants, they may be bacteriological pollutants, or they may be radioactive pollutants. When it comes to the physical pollutants of the uh, groundwater uh, uh, pollution. So, here you can say this is the temperature, color, odor, turbidity etcetera. So, these are all can be grouped under the physical pollutants. So, next coming to the inorganic pollutants. So, here we get the uh, this is the heavy metals and uh, various other inorganic uh, uh, there is uh, ions uh, as well as uh, radicals. Coming to this uh, organic pollutants, so here in this organic pollutants we have this carbon, nitrogen, chlorophyll, chemical oxygen demand, uh, phenolic uh, compounds which are known as phenolics and what are popularly known as MBAS which stands for methylene blue active substances. So, these are all the uh, uh, categorized under the organic pollutants. Next, we need to uh, account for the bacteriological pollutants. So, which include the coliform bacteria, the viruses, the pathogens or pathogenic bacteria and then lastly, the biochemical oxygen demand. So, these uh, all are grouped under the bacteriological pollutants. And last but not the least, so there is there are what are known as the radioactive pollutants in which tritium is there which is an isotope of hydrogen, then uh, radium, strontium and other uh, radioactive materials. So, here, so we need to identify these uh, sources, these are the uh, in terms of their category, in terms of their origin, whether they are originating from landfill or whether they are originating from any industrial source or whether it, they are originating from municipal source or agricultural source. And uh, accordingly, we need to the, uh, take the future this one. And next what is required is the assessment of the groundwater usage. So, depending upon the usage of groundwater, we need to that is uh, uh, we need to uh, estimate the potential of pollutants. Say for example, when we talk of the groundwater usage, so here we need to consider what are the future locations for pumping as well as extraction as well as so the what are the future locations of uh, say the uh, habitation and so on. So, where there is a possibility of uh, more water demand and then uh, so there there is a possibility of uh, groundwater not meeting the quality standards and uh, causing pollution and so on. And uh, uh, after this, we also need to assess the hydrogeological conditions. So, in this, so we need to consider the aquifers, their depth, their aerial extent, 
and the other details as well as their hydraulic conductivity and so on as well as the natural groundwater recharge and discharge areas, the isobath maps. So, all these uh, the hydrologi hydrogeological conditions need to be assessed properly, so that we can uh, get a fair estimate of uh, the uh, potential pollutants, poten the evaluation the potential evaluation of the groundwater pollution. And uh, last, but not the least. So, the evaluation of the pollution mechanism. So, whenever there is a pollution taking place, so it uh, takes place through the Vedo zone. So, that is the basically the unsaturated zone and here the, uh, the properties of the Vedo zone as well as uh, such as the hydraulic conductivity, degree of saturation as well as the, the connectivity of aquifers, all these things need to be accounted for in the evaluation of phase 1. So, once we have the information about all these uh, uh, all these uh, items such as the identification of the pollution sources and potential pollutants, assessment of the usage of ground water, assessment of the hydrogeological conditions as well as the evaluation of the pollution mechanism. So, then we uh, will be in a position to reasonably make a good estimate of the eva potential evaluation of uh, ground water pollution. So, now let us move over to the physical evaluation of ground water quality and uh, this is taken from the source of the Johnson's uh, Johnson division uh, from the year 1965. And here the physical parameters of uh, which constitutes the physical evaluation of groundwater quality include temperature, electric conductivity, then the total uh, suspended solids and the total dissolved solids. And here, so the temperature for the normal groundwater, the temperature ranges from say 10 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius and of course, it may vary also because these are just normal ranges and there are always one. And likewise, the electrical conductivity of uh, the normal, the normal range of variation of electrical conductivity is from 100 to 1000 uh, millimoles per centimeter. And uh, coming to this uh, other parameters such as the, the total dissolved solids. So, the normal range varies from 100 to 500 ppm. And uh, of course, in this case, so if the so th there may also be regions where the uh, the total dissolved solids concentration may go even below 100 or may go even above 500, depending upon the hydraulic conductivity. And likewise, the total suspended solids concentration also normally varies uh, in the range of say 100 ppm to 500 ppm and uh, of course, it can also depending upon the, uh, the various locations as well as various uh, special uh, specific cases, it may even go below 100 or it may even exceed 500. And then, so this turbidity also in one of the parameters, so in which we can say the normal range of uh, the uh, groundwater turbidity is from 1 to 5, which is very much within the uh, permissible range. And uh, so, likewise, so if the evaluation of all these physical parameters constitute what is known as the physical evaluation of the groundwater quality. Now, we will go to the chemical analysis of uh, this uh, groundwater quality. And here in the chemical analysis of uh, groundwater quality, so the, uh, the parameters which are uh, uh, analyzed, which are to be analyzed are that is the concentration by weight. followed by the 
chemical equivalence followed by total dissolved solids by electrical conductance then the hardness. So, these are the chemical analysis these constitute the chemical analysis of the uh, ground water and uh, first let us see the concentration by weight. So, in this uh, concentration by weight So, here so in this case this milligram per liter. So, this is replaced by parts per million. And uh, this one So, this is the, the ionic concentration or sometimes. So, it is also expressed in terms of say microgram per liter. And uh, this one and it is said that the milligrams per liter the, the this uh, milligram per liter. So, this milligram per liter is uh, equivalent to to say seven thousand milligram per liter of uh, dissolved solids. And uh, next we will come to the chemical equivalence So, in this the various uh, ions the the conversion factors for various ions are uh, as under so, here so this is to determine or say to estimate the chemical equivalence. And here so, this is uh, the, the source is uh, from uh, hem and uh, in this the chemical constituent and then the conversion factor.
once we multiply by this conversion factor, so it will is uh, the equivalent concentration so will be in terms of in uh, milli equivalents per liter per liter so if the concentration so basically that is uh, concentration in mg per liter multiplied by this conversion factor cf so that is uh, concentration in mg per liter multiplied by this conversion factor cf so multiplied by cf which is equal to concentration in uh, milli equivalent per liter so this is the equation and uh, here let us uh, consider some of this one like say the aluminum ion al plus 3 so it has a conversion factor of say point uh, 11119 likewise the ammonium that is nh4 plus so it has a concentration of uh, say 0 0.05544 and among them so these are for some of the uh, cations like so uh, like uh, some more can be listed here like uh, that is the barium so ba plus 2 so it has a conversion factor of 0 0.01456 and uh, let us go to some of the cations so the chemical constituent then uh, conversion factor like uh, say so here this copper so copper has a conversion factor of uh, 0 0.03148 this put this potassium say k plus it has a conversion factor of 0 0.02557 now let us come to some of the anions and here in this anion so this bicarbonate that is uh, HCO3 so it has a conversion factor of say 0 0.01639 and then carbonate CO3 minus 2 so it has a conversion factor of 0 0.0 3333 3, 3, 3. likewise this hydroxide that is oh minus it has a conversion factor of uh, 0 0.05888 and here among the cations the highest conversion is uh, factor is for uh, the hydrogen ion so for the hydrogen ion the conversion factor is as high as 0 0.99209 likewise among the cations the the least conversion factor is for iodide so that is 0 0.0001 
डबल जीरो सेवन एट एट एंड देन दिस नाइट्रेट एनओ थ्री माइनस इट हैज अ कन्वर्शन फैक्टर ऑफ से पॉइंट जीरो वन सिक्स वन थ्री सो दिस इज रिगार्डिंग द दिस वन द the chemical equivalence and now we'll go to the the total dissolved solids by electrical conductance so here this uh, One milli equivalent per liter of cations is equal to hundred micro. That is a uh, Siemens. So this is a. Uh, micro siemens per centimeter so this is the conversion for uh, the total dissolved solids in terms of this electrical conductance and then lastly we will come to this is uh, the hardness so this hardness which is abbreviated as ht so we can uh, it is expressed as ca calcium and magnesium hardness and this ht which is equal to calcium multiplied by this uh, calcium carbonate plus the magnesium harden hardness that is also multiplied by calcium carbonate calcium and uh, so if uh, this is equal to say 2.5 the cal uh, times calcium hardness plus 4.1 times the magnesium hardness so that will give the the total hardness and of course uh, so here uh, say some uh, this one that is uh, so the classification based on hardness that is water classification based on hardness is uh, say here this hardness in milligram per liter of CaCO3 and uh, the class r if the hardness is between 0 and 75 mg per liter then it is called a soft water if it is 75 to 150 it is called a uh, moderately hard so 150 to 2 300 it is called hard and 300 above 300 it is uh, very hard so this is how the uh, the water uh, is classified based on the hardness next uh, uh, this coming to this uh, biological analysis of uh, ground water quality so here we know that uh, so this uh, 
So, there is what is called the MPN, the most probable number. to quantify the the microorganisms and also there is what is called uh, what is uh, this BOD. So, these are uh, two uh, biochemical oxygen demand. So, these are uh, these indicate the uh, two of uh, major parameters based on which the biological analysis of ground water can be done. And uh, so, accordingly, we can uh, classify the groundwater as uh, it is uh, um, good or uh, acceptable or that uh, is uh, requiring treatment and so on. Now, let us come to the criteria that is. Uh, criteria and measures for uh, ground water quality. So, here we should uh, know that the depending upon the purpose for which the ground water is used. So, the criteria of uh, ground water quality has to be decided. So, and we all know that, so this uh, drinking water, it requires the highest quality of uh, uh, ground water, highest water quality. So, therefore, this drinking water has a uh, most stringent uh, this one. So, that is uh, say drinking water most stringent water quality standards so next below this is the irrigation water that is somewhat less that is uh, less stringent water quality. Then other purposes, so it may the water quality standards may even be less say if it is used for uh, may be other uh, purposes other than drinking or irrigation. So, wherein so it is uh, one. So, now, let us consider this uh, the drinking water quality so the drinking water quality standards. So, here let us this list the parameters. Then whether they are desirable or uh, if it is desirable let us write it as D or if it is essential let us write it as E. Then the unit in which it is uh, the parameter is quantified then the World Health Organization standards WHO standards as per say 1984 of course, they have been revised uh, sometime in the late 
2000 and then this uh, Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS Standards. So, this is the Bureau of Indian Standards. So, this is also 1983, then this uh, upper limit. So, here in this let me also write this uh, upper limit. So, now firstly let us uh, consider that is the Al aluminum. So, it is desirable it is not essential and uh, units are milligram per liter and as per the WHO standards it is 0 0.2 milligram per liter and as per the uh, this one Bureau of Indian standards. So, the minimum is uh, so this is lower limit is 0 0.03. and uh, upper limit is 0 0.2. Next is the MBAS that is methylene blue active substance, methylene blue active substance. So, this is also desirable and uh, this is unit is uh, mg per liter max and it does this WHO does not have a standard whereas, uh, as per Bureau of Indian standards it has to it needs to be within 0 0.2 and uh, 1. Next is uh, arsenic which is a toxic substance of course, uh, however, that is also in this one and this is uh, it is also been listed as desirable and this is mg per liter maximum. So, again this arsenic even the maximum concentration should not exceed 0 0.01 milligram per liter and uh, so here so this is uh, 0 0.05 milligram per liter that is the upper limit so next is this cadmium and uh, cadmium is also desirable mg per liter max it is uh, point zero zero 0.003 and here so this is point zero 0.01. Next uh, let us so this is the chromium Cr plus 6. So, it is also desirable and uh, so this is mg per liter and this chromium needs to be within 0 0.05 and it is the same as per this one. Next is copper. So, this copper is also desirable and uh, so again the units are same mg per liter and it is uh, the maximum is uh, 1 as per world health standards. So, this is world health uh, this is a standard upper limit obviously. And uh, in this in case of uh, this one so it has to be 
the minimum is 0 0.05 and maximum is 1.5. Next is uh, uh, this uh, say color and color is uh, it is essential and so it is uh, expressed in terms of hazen units and uh, it is uh, the upper limit as per WHO standards is 15 and as per the Bureau of Indian standards it needs to be between 5 and 25. So, next is uh, cyanide that is C n minus and this is also a toxic substance that was however, it is also listed as desirable and uh, it is uh, this one cyanide is uh, mg per liter max and it uh, needs to be 0 0.0 within 0 0.07 and uh, so here as per the Bureau of Indian Standards it has to be within 0 0.05. So, next is uh, the electrical conductivity. that is E c. So, this electrical conductivity is essential it is uh, the unit is I am sorry this d s per meter that is deca Siemens per meter deci Siemens per meter then it is uh, 1600 the upper limit and as per the Bureau of Indian standards it needs to be between 800 and 4800. So, next we will uh, so these are some of the parameters. So, let me is the parameter then uh, whether it is desirable that is D or essential E then the unit then uh, WHO standard upper limit and uh, Bureau of Indian standards that is lower limit upper limit. So, we will go to this uh, hardness as uh, the total hardness as C A C O 3 in terms of C A C O 3. So, this is essential and it has the units of m g per liter and uh, it is the, the upper limit uh, as per W H O standards is 500 as per Indian standards. So, 300 to 500 and uh, next is iron. So, it is essential so, the same m g per liter 0.3 and here it is uh, in case of Bureau of Indian Standards 0 0.3 to 1. Next is uh, lead. So, this is desirable. So, this is m g per liter 0 0.05 and uh, here also it is 0 0.05 as per the upper standards of uh, upper limits of this one. Next is magnesium, it is also desirable. The so WHO as per uh, this is also mg per liter, and here it is not given. So, whereas as per the Bureau of Indian Standards, it is uh, 1983, it is between 30 and 100. And then uh, next we will go to this manganese, it is desirable 
so mg per liter max mg per liter and uh, so this is 0 0.4 and uh, in this case in case of bureau of standards it is 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 next is mercury it is also considered poisonous but however it is listed and uh, here this is mg per liter max and uh, this one 0 0.001 and uh, here this is same. Next is this uh, nitrate. So, it is uh, the essential then uh, 6.5 to 8.5. mg per liter 6.5 to 8.5 and uh, here it is uh, 6.5 and then 9.2. Now, uh, this uh, sulphate. So, this sulphate is desirable mg per liter. So, it is uh, 400 is the upper limit and then uh, 200 as per this one 200 to 400. Next is uh, like taste. So, taste is uh, essential and uh, here it is. Uh, so, the in this one. So, everywhere it is written as a, it has to be agreeable. Next is this uh, TDS total dissolved solids. So, this is uh, mg per liter max, this is desirable mg per liter max and then this has to be upper limit is 1000 and uh, it has in this case it is uh, 200 to 2000 as per the Bureau of Indian Standards. So, these are some of the uh, standards and uh, Now, let us discuss the so this uh, water quality for agriculture. So, here So, this uh, this the classification of poor quality ground waters for agriculture. So, this is a source it is Gupta et al. That is 1994. So, in this classification of poor quality ground waters, so this is the water quality, then the EC of uh, irrigation water which can be used for irrigation or agricultural water. So, in terms of uh, deca semen per meter, next is this uh, sodium adsorption ratio that is SAR in terms of uh, of irrigation water in terms of mole. Next is this residual alkalinity. So, this residual alkalinity in uh, 
milli equivalent per liter. So, here say if the water quality has to be good, then this electrical conductivity for irrigation water it has to be less than 2 deci siemen per meter and uh, the sodium absorption SAR sodium adsorption ratio has to be less than 10 mole and the residual alkalinity has to be less than 2.5 milli equivalent per liter. So, next is if uh, there is uh, saline waters. So, they have an electrical conductivity ranging from say 2 to 4 and uh, again the sodium adsorption ratio is less than 10 and uh, this residual alkalinity is again less than 2.5. So, this is a marginally saline waters. Next is saline water. So, the saline waters the electrical conductivity for of irrigation water is greater than 4, then this but however, the sodium adsorption ratio is still less than 10 and the residual alkalinity is still less than 2.5. Next is a high sodium adsorption ratio and saline saline waters. In this case, the electrical conductivity is greater than 4 and uh, this one is uh, greater than 10 and this is less than 2.5. So, these are all uh, all these uh, three come under uh, saline waters. Now, coming to this alkaline waters. So, that is uh, marginally alkaline for this the electrical conductivity is less than 4, this SAR is less than 10 and uh, this residual alkalinity is say 2.5 to 4. Next is uh, alkaline. So, there for them the electrical conductivity is less than 4, the SAR sodium adsorption ratio is less than 10 and uh, residual alkalinity is greater than 4 milli equivalent per liter. And uh, next is highly alkaline. So, all these three come under uh, alkaline water. And again this highly alkaline also this uh, electrical conductivity is variable this uh, sodium adsorption ratio is greater than 10 and this is greater than 4. So, like this the so if the uh, electrical conductivity is less than 2, the sodium adsorption is less than 10 and residual alkalinity is uh, less than 2.5 milli equivalent per liter. So, then that is the ideal and which can be used for all uh, kinds of uh, this agricultural crops. However, if it is uh, either marginally saline or saline or uh, high sodium alkaline. So, in that case we have to it has depending upon the crop we need to use this uh, as one. And uh, so, uh, this is how regarding the 
this one and in the uh, uh, next lecture we will be discussing about the other aspects of uh, ground water quality. Thank you.